Well, hi guys, it's Sandy Alnock, and I am excited to be part of the series that Ellen Hudson does every year, the 12 Feminine Tags of Christmas, and I get to play with Art Impressions Watercolor. So I got out the cabins and the fir trees, and the fir trees have both branches and the tree trunks in them, and I'm just gonna pick one of the houses but I'm going to use the dies from the concertina set that I showed you recently. The concertina set has three different bottoms on them, the jaggedy, the loopy, and the single banner. So you can cut them apart and have three tags, or you can use them all together like I did in my previous video. I'm going to stamp my main cabin image on the tag by lining it up using the center line on my lawn fawn block. So any kind of block that you have that has a a center point on it that you can get it straight so that when you turn the stamp over you're going to get your walls straight on your building. And I'm going to throw in a gray color first on everything. You could just target where you're going to put your color but I started throwing color on before I realized oh I should probably do something different. So now I'm going to add some brown for the door for that beautiful chimney and a little bit around some windows just a little bit of brown color. And then th there's snow on the building now, so I need to put some snow out there. So I'm coloring over top with blue. And by the way, I'm doing this with these Zig Twin Touch markers. Twin tip markers? Twin Touch, yes, by Zig. I'm gonna have all the links, of course, in the supply section in the doobly-doo and over on the blog. So now I've got my block turned upside down. I've got my house positioned. It's nice and straight and centered and I can start my water coloring. So the water is going to actually melt out all that beautiful color from the markers. And I'm gonna start with my snow. So I softened that edge on the bottom so the house is standing in snow. And then I'm gonna add some snow to the roof. And I want my light to be coming from the upper right, so I'm gonna add a little shadow along the side of that, that little part peeking out of the roof. And now I'll start painting some of the other areas, like that big chimney. Throw in a little bit of water into that, that little window peeking out of the roof. And then I'm going to start working on the door. Now with a door like this, you could just paint a big old brown door, but I wanted to have almost some, some dry brush look. But there wasn't enough pigment there for me to use. So I scribbled some onto the block and I can just pick it up and drop it into that water and create that almost that wood look by letting some of those areas be white. Not everything has to be fully painted in. It actually looks better when it's not fully painted in. So do a little bit around the window. And I wanted to do something really fun with the rest of the cabin because I could have made it just normal wood slats or that sort of thing but I decided to put some more colors onto my block and make some stones. And it's really easy to make a stone wall just by scribbling some colors onto your block to pick up a little bit of this ink, a little bit of that ink, and make little blobs. They can touch and run into each other, the colors can mix, that sort of thing. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. And one of the things about these Zig Twin Touch Markers, the same kind of thing happens with the clean color, is that the color sort of changes when you do things to it. So I want to show you what happens here. I'm putting colors down that start to look like a bunch of green stones to me because I had a little bit of a blue and a little bit of a brown. And then when I dabbed off color, look how brown everything went. <laughs> it just kind of all turned into that that nice brown color which is fine because I didn't like all the green that I ended up with because that was a little bit weird so this this is one of those cases when the marker changed color when I did something to it see all that stuff that looks green right there dab it off and it goes brown I don't know why that is it's just a science thing with the color somehow that only happens with those markers so now I'm going to take some brown and I've got the, the snow masked off and I'm just going to start making tree trunks. I throw little, little tiny bits of them on the, the part behind my little house, my little cabin. And then take one of the little, little bits of branches. They're all different sizes and some are curly and some are not. This is one that's not curly and I'm just using the tip of it. 
I only put ink on the tip. So that way I'm really in control of how much because this is such a tiny tag. I didn't want to make it too overwhelming. And I'm just using sticky notes. I didn't, you know, you could actually stamp out the whole house to mask it, that whole cabin. And I was like, ah, let's just use a sticky and call it good, right? And then I can use my water to just create a thicker forest and let that let that green kind of turn into a light green behind it and that this this tree wanted to be in front because of the way I stamped it so one tree is going to be partially in front of the cabin the others are going to remain behind it and I think that actually adds more nice depth to it to have some some in the front and some behind which is kind of nice and the brown and the green work really nicely together in making a forest I kind of figured that out as I went along which was a nice thing to find so now I want to work on the windows a little bit. I've got a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green on my palette because I wanted to show you how to make make it look like there's just a little Christmas tree inside. I'm just going to put a little bit of green on one side. I'm not painting a Christmas tree. Notice that I just threw some color in there. If you were looking at a cabin from a distance, all you'd see is a little haze of green through that window. You're not going to see a whole lot. I want to make it look like there's a little path coming from the door. So I just put a few strokes of blue and then I'll watercolor that out and make them really soft. And the more blue you add to one side, the more white looks like it's next to it. So I wanted to add a little bit more punch to that, that blue area up there on the, the roof. So I just took a real quick swipe with the marker. Be careful doing that because if you do it with a dark color, you could end up with a big old blob on your card. I was very glad that this blue did not do that to me after I got this far in my painting. And then I want to add a little bit more to my chimney, paint a little bit more brown in there to make sure that that's good and brown. And this whole time I was also very conscious of what was dry and what was wet. The trees had become dry so I thought now is a good time I can add some snow while the rest of the house dries because I wanted to add a little more detail onto it. So I'm just using a Signo Uniball white pen to make some little snowy dots on that. If you do these snowy dots while it's still wet, it'll just melt in so it would actually lighten color. So if you have any areas that are big and dark, then throw some white pen in there while it's still wet and it'll just kind of lighten everything. These uh, Zig Twin Touch Markers have two tips to them. They have the big fat brush tip and then they have a little bullet nib. So I'm going to use that little bullet nib to add a little shadow, just a little C shape on the bottom of each one of my stones, which gives them a little bit of dimension. Look how much detail is added by that, by just a little tiny, barely touched, uh, just a little C mark, which kind of really helped the, the cabin quite a bit. And of course I had to add a middle to my window so that that looked more like a window. Add a little bit more strength of color to a few of the edges. And if you add too much, you can, of course, just soften that out by using a little bit of water with it. I had the idea to make this a layered tag. So I got out my vellum and the no peeking stamp set that has some sentiments in it. And I wanted the from and the to, and I decided to add the with love as well. Stamped it onto a vellum version of this tag and tied it with a piece of ribbon and I wanted to show you what it looks like underneath a little peekaboo to that beautiful stamped cabin and I'm going to take some twine and add it to the beautiful ribbon that's already there so if the person wants to save this tag and hang it on their Christmas tree as an ornament they can get rid of the silly little vellum tag and keep the beautiful cabin tag as a Christmas ornament which I think is a very sweet idea and I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure you go to the Ellen Hudson blog to see Laurel's watercolor. She's doing Art and Crescent's watercolor too. And stay tuned every one of the 12 days for more tags from Ellen and her crew. And you could also stay tuned to my blog because I've got videos for the 12 days of Christmas as well in my Rush to Christmas series. Go see the blog to hear more about what that is all about. And I will see you guys later. Links to everything are in the doobly-doo. Ta-ta. See ya.